Welcome, everybody. PBR Podcast. Mike Flano, Joe Maffei, Dennis the Intern. Uh, and guess what? Quarantine's over, and the coronavirus never happens. It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Governor Murphy said so today. Uh, he rewrote the he rewrote the, the lines today. Didn't he move the goalpost again today? He, well, yeah, dude. If, you, if you're exercising your First Amendment right, there's no coronavirus. No. <laughs> it's no so I, I like it, too. So now the WHO came out and said that uh, asymptomatic transmission is very, very low. Yep. Yeah. And that was the thing that made most of us worried. You know, you yep. could avoid a guy that's coughing and hacking, but just some, you know, virus grenade with the pin pulled that doesn't look like anything. Yeah. Apparently that was wrong. Yeah. Dude, we've never been so right. Oh. You know so what I mean? Are we ever going to listen to experts again? No, that's the problem. I mean, if it hasn't been, if it's not apparent now that it's all been a big, big like scam, yeah, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, obviously there's a virus, right? And people got sick from it. But like, if you look at all of the data, it, you don't get it from services. Asymptomatics don't spread it. What they did with the nursing homes, how they were nursing homes were crying for help. They didn't give it to them. All the old people in the nursing homes died. We brought in the hospitals on the ships. We didn't need them. We erected hospitals. We didn't need them. Ventilators weren't a, an issue, right? They were more bad to get like nothing. No, nothing was right. Not a thing. <laughs> I'm so just whole- nervous about the asteroid that's going to be coming in, and they're going to be like, "Yo, we got to do something," and we're like, "Screw you!" Like we had to do with COVID, <laughs> and then boom. <laughs> that's, you think they're holding on to it now because they they just don't want to seem so wrong? I guess so. I, I mean, I, I I go back and forth, man. I don't even know what to think. Like I, I've been describing it as my head literally is just spinning. Like the the nonsense is so loud, yeah. I can't concentrate. You know what I mean? But at this point. I, I feel like, I don't know, if you look at, like, I don't, I don't want to get political about it, but red versus blue states, like, red states have been open, blue states aren't. Are they pushing it um, to the election? Are the protests um, part of the, you know, way to get it to spike to go to the election? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't even know what's going on. My head just spins constantly. Like, or nobody really knows what they're doing, and we're just dumb apes. Like, I, I think that's probably more accurate than anything. We're just dumb apes. I'll be the first dumb ape. Honestly, I feel it, man. I just feel like uninformed. Uh, I don't have an opinion that actually matters. And if I do, there's always someone telling me that it's wrong. And then when I think I'm right and I'm totally sure I'm right, then I know I'm wrong. <laughs> you know? I think that's the <laughs> yeah. problem that's happening. You know what, I, you know what I've, fi- I've come to the conclusion? <clears throat> I just need to be prepared for me and mine. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Like, I don't care what anybody else is saying. Like, we're doing what we need to do to be prepared and, you know, be able to sustain and that and that's that man that's what we're gonna do and and we're gonna be like be ki- like be kind to people like if i could ever echo my uh, joe gatto be kind if i can ever echo him now's the time to echo him like be kind to one another be a yeah. good person right do what you have to do for you and yours prepare for the future and be positive yeah like yeah. that i mean that's what i got out of this whole thing I'd say amen, but that'd be Christian. I mean, dude, listen, listen. <laughs> what the fuck? I spent, <laughs> I spent the entire day with my son, right? Yeah. We got up. We went for a two-mile walk. He ate breakfast while we were pushing a stroller. We had to hang the dog. Oh, he was in the stroller. I hope you didn't make that poor little toddler <laughs> walk for two miles. No, dude. And, and then we came home. We played in the yard, right? We had lunch. He took a nap. He got up. I threw him on the bike. We, I rode to the beach. We went to the beach. We played in the in the ocean. It was like one of those perfect. Uh, Mafe, you're a beach guy. You're from a beach town like I am, so you'll appreciate yeah. this. Tide today was one of those perfect tides where it made tide pools. Oh, cool! Which is perfect for a two year old. You know yeah. what I mean? So like he could play in the ocean, but not be in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So we did that. We came home. We swam in the pool. Gave him dinner. He went to bed. Now I'm here talking to you guys. Like, who am I to complain about anything? It's weird. I can't see you pushing a stroller, even though I saw a woman today pushing a stroller with a dog in it. Oh, 
My wife, I don't, did you, my wife's like, I don't get that. My wife's like, did you see that woman with the pushing the dog with the stroller in it? And I looked at her and I go, she's hot. She can do whatever she wants. <laughs> what does that, uh, who is it? Is it Tom Segura has that joke? He's like, I love my dogs. Yeah. I love them. I take care of them and I love my kids, but it's not the same. And here's no. the difference. Yeah, it's not, it's not the same. If Although my dog I will... attacks my kid, I will beat the dog to death yeah. <laughs> while the kid watches. That dog's joke was, starter kids. That joke was really good too when, when, when Tom when Segura, Segura did, did it yeah. on his special. Yeah. Um, if you I, would put, I would put Hank in a stroller if he were injured, I yes. guess. You know? Yeah. He cut one of his little pads and was bleeding on the ground and you didn't have any like crazy glue to mend it. Throw him right in the stroller. I hear yeah. that. You know, yeah, but, but you uh, would put him in the stroller to go back. You wouldn't like it. Wouldn't be his life. Yeah. No, his I mean, life like, wouldn't be strolling about. No, I mean, like we go for walks just about every day, barring weather phenomena. Uh-huh. You know, so uh, if he couldn't walk anymore, he'd still want to get out there. I'd throw him in a wagon or a stroller or something. Yeah, it's and, like, sad his, though. When it's a dog sad, wants yeah. to, when a dog wants to do something and it can no longer do it, like my dog can't jump up on stuff and it makes the attempt and it's just so pathetic and sad. I feel bad every time. I mean, you should probably just put him down at that point, right? <laughs> oh no, oh, no, no. She's, still, she's still good. You just got to pick her up well, and put her on just, the bed. Yeah, you, you make some concessions here. You I mean, know, like I guess a little Q, something from the jump up to jump yeah. up and you know, give him a yeah. step. Like Q giving the IV to the cat. Well, I guess it was too far for uh, you. <laughs> I mean, listen, I love my cat too, and. Yeah. It it needs to like it should. I think it died months ago. <laughs> and let's play a little. Let's play a little game here, right? Like I don't know if if the lovely and talented Pam ever listens to the show. I think probably not. But let's play a little game. Okay. My cat. She hates this cat. Yeah. This yeah. cat throws up ten times a day, and it's not fur. It too. <laughs> it's not fur balls because it's never cleaned itself ever. It's a dirty mangy. It stinks. It stinks. Its teeth are falling out. Blood just pours out of its face from time to time. And it just throws up on everything. You buy a new carpet, it pukes on the carpet. You buy a new couch, it pukes on the couch. So we went away this weekend. And here's how I want to like, here's how I want to test if she listens. When we got back from the weekend, I've kind of gotten the, the feeding of the cat down to a science where she'll throw up less, where I give her wet pate and I have to mush up the pate, but I only give her a quarter of a can at a time. You have yeah. to mush up the mushy wet dog food. It's a it's a cat. It's a, it's a cat, but yes, yeah, less than a baby. Oh, it's cat food. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a second mushing, dude. A second I could do mushing. It eight times a day. Like I'm. Oh my God. This cat owns me, right? But she doesn't throw up if I do that. But we went away for two days, so I had to, uh, I had to put it dry food in a self feeding container, which she's not used to eating, and she'll overindulge and hence throw up all over stuff. So we got a brand new cat. Uh, we got a brand new rug underneath the dining room table. Uh huh. I rug. I made sure when we got home <laughs> that I got into the house first, right? Like poor Pam is like unpacking bags out of the back of the car, and I <laughs> ran upstairs with, with Parker to just I had to check. So the cat threw up everywhere. She threw up twice on the brand new rug. She threw up once on the on the playroom rug where Parker plays. She threw up. In the, in the kitchen she threw up in the basement she threw up everywhere but, and i cleaned it up before pam saw any of it <laughs> and then she walked in the house and what were the first words out of her mouth did the cat throw up did the cat throw up <laughs> and what did i respond no no honey no and i said <laughs> absolutely not she absolutely didn't look not. she's great now is that a lie no not really <laughs> it's only a lie in the sense that you didn't tell the truth. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen this movie before. You went out back of your house and buried this cat in the pet cemetery. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes dead is better, Mike. Sometimes I mean, dead is better. What, what? Like, would you? All right. So, if she, all right, if she listens to this episode right now, right? Does she, does she get mad because I lied to her? But by then, it's a week old. Yeah, I don't think so. Nah, it's. She might be like, so the cat did. You know, wow. I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to hold on to a, a grudge like that. Yeah, and if your relationship's anything like mine, I've done seven things since then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's in the past. That's great. That's <laughs> it, you know. You want to talk about what we did a week ago or the things I'm causing right now? <laughs> exactly. That's so good. today's problems. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'd get rid of that cat, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard, dude. She she does everything 
like she normally would do in her lifetime except hold food down so how do you like how do you know like, how do you know to put them down how do you know like she's ready to die the not eating thing is a pretty good or not being able to hold food down well she can hold down small amounts of wet food like i so i've, I've gotten it to down to a science and she she's pretty good with that <clears throat> I think the you know, comparison our, our, on how much you're into animal rights. Yeah, quality of life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know? I could just like in the pool. No, 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 no active hand. No active hand. I'll tell no. you what I'm not doing. <laughs> you can ah, set up I like know. a Rube Goldberg machine <laughs> <laughs> where the cat knocks something over and it moves a book and then it slices this. Then, 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 then 15 steps later. <laughs> I'm not taking her to the vet to have her euthanized. I've been down that road and I'll never do it again. Think Why? about like 10 aspirin inside the thing. <laughs> <laughs> have you done it before, Dennis? I have. So, I had a, we had a little dog. We had a little Jack Russell Terrier that we, uh, I, I kept alive longer than I probably should have. Uh, probably a good six months to arguably a year. Her quality of life was, was not that good, but I, I couldn't let go. So it was just to the point where even I couldn't deny it to myself anymore that it was time to let, uh, t- time to, give cecilia a, a peaceful end and it was terrible man it was terrible they brought her in the doctor took a look and i still was like hey is there anything and they're like like dennis this is this is it neurologically she's gone she's blind she's deaf you know she's getting lost inside of her own house this is it's time so they gave her the shot to calm her down and they gave her the the shot and Minutes later, my my dog is still. Mm, mm, I started losing it with these guys. I'm like, "What the f are you doing?" Yeah. I'm like, "Reverse it. She wants to live. She wants to live." I'm like we, <laughs> literally, I don't know. I felt like, like, what what am I supposed to? They're like, you know, very calmly. They knew how to handle me. They're like, you know, then it's, why it's, why did did they not give her the right dose? I, I don't think they gave. In my opinion, they didn't give her the right dose. Ooh. And I'll tell you what's subtle that they didn't. They I didn't have to pay for the. <laughs> you got a freebie. <laughs> I didn't have to pay for the, the 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 cremation. I didn't have to pay for the box, and I didn't have to pay for the little pad that they do little like the the nice stuff they do. Nice. I had to pay for the thing, but so they're like, no, this is, I've never seen this happen before. I'm like, well, give her the antidote. Like, yeah. there's no antidote, Dennis. This is it. Yeah. We're down the road. I'm like, well, then give her another one. Well, I want to wait and see, and I, I I almost grabbed the guy. Thank God, Mrs. The intern was there to be like. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, well, what? Wait and see. This my animal's been suffering for minutes. Yeah. And then they did. As soon as they popped in the other one, it was. And then you she, know, so oh, it was awful, man. Awful. That's where I was most hydrated off. from crying. That's where I was most pissed off about my experience. So you had mentioned the shot before the shot. The shot before so, the shot. Yeah, I was pretty pissed off about that because when I went. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just gonna if you do that again, Dennis, I know, I know, I, I couldn't find it fast enough. Like everybody listening to this podcast, just shut it off. Like yeah. they feel like you can get it from listening <laughs> to <can>. podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> they can't. I think but Governor Murphy said you could. <laughs> um, so he took he took Bunky. This is Bunky the cat. So Bunky he took Bunky back and was giving her a shot before the shot. Oh, mm-hmm. we're just, to just relax her. But when he brought her back, dude, she was already gone, and I was like. I was mad about that. Like, you what's the, say goodbye. What, well, she was totally glassed over and gone, and then they gave her the second shot, but she was already dead from the first one, and I was pissed <laughs> off. Like, that was some balls, man. Two no, shots? Is that epoxy or something? Like, what they, the give, they give the shot before the shot. You haven't had a, yeah. a, an animal put down? One shot is what, what went down when we wow. the last dog. One I mean, shot. It, it was different in the 50s, Joe. Yeah, maybe. yeah back but then. <laughs> the messed up thing was when we did ours, the dog was just laying there, and it looked up and was like, you suck. And that was it. It, oh. was like, it like, looked at me, and I still see its face. You still see its face. Oh, no. Yeah. No, they, I, I appreciated it. They did everything in the room. Yeah. The the shot for the shot was we were in the room and then the shot came in and it was it was I don't know what I was expecting but it 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 was it was awful but you know awful. now I it's have awful dude it's awful yeah. you just it ripped I I <clears throat> I cried for the loss of my dog I ended up crying <laughs> because I, minute, I forgot wait. to say so, goodbye to my grandma I mean everything came out in one all the stuff I was holding in came out in one moment oh it was awful you both have witnessed birth right you both have witnessed yep. birth yes which was worse for you death death 
Dude, I threw up three times in the birth, birthing room. Birth was magical. I could not believe the blood and and gore and oh like. Oh my god! Well, who was he giving birth to? Rosemary's baby? What it the was. It, was, it was the grossest experience. I was not prepared for in my life. I still don't know how females do. Was it? it was it natural or was? Yeah, it, it was natural. It was a. It was a complete conehead baby. Yeah. Bro, yeah, about I, you? I'm, 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 I, the second baby, I was like, I'm ice chip man up top. And it things out. I'm never looking again. That was the scariest thing I've ever seen. The only thing I got woozy on was when they administered the epidural. Everything else, man, I was, mm. I was not into per se, but I was like, I'm ready for this. I'm excited. Let's, let's get it on. Okay, we're going to give your wife the epidural. I'm like, you know, whatever she needs, go for it. And I'm thinking about it now, watching that needle go into the spine. Ah, oh, man. Ah, Did I ever tell you my experience, dude, what happened in the delivery room? No. no. Um, so it, so she, we had a C-section. We. We. Pam had, Pam had a C-section, right? <laughs> nice two things. Head, baby. I'll, I'll know twice. She'll hit me twice if she actually listens to this, right? <laughs> <laughs> the puke lie and, and the wee bullshit. Here comes the cover. <laughs> um. <laughs> So I sat up by her head on a stool, and our doctor was muy poquito. Yeah. Oh. She was on a uh, – so when I come into the room, there's like a, a drape hanging across her ch- Pam's chest. Right. right? And I'm, w- I'm on the side with Pam's head. I've seen and, porn like this. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting <laughs> on a stool you don't even uh, know, you know, trying to comfort Pam. Sure. And I can see the step stool of our doctor. Right by my feet are, are her feet. Honest, all I see are her feet. <laughs> the surgical on her step stool. <laughs> so small, she yeah. can't like get on the table. So <clears throat> he was very breached. So like he was up top. So like the 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 table's like shake. Pam's head is like like uh-huh. shaking back and forth. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? The doctors were like trying to push Parker out, and he was like holding on, like he didn't want to come out. You don't want to come so out. So then I look at like he knew the, it was coming. The table really starts to shake, and I look at the stool, and there's no more feet on the stool. This woman like climbed up on top of Pam, and was like <laughs> was like pushing, and Pam's wow. like, look. she's like, Pam was like, look, just just look over, just look over. I want to know what's going on. Just no. look. And no, I was no, like, no. I was like, I was like, okay. So mind you, my doctor. So now she's four foot nothing, right? She had on what now people wear in the reg, going to like Wegmans, one of those shield masks, like sure. welder, like yeah. the plastic shield masks. <clears throat> so I'm like, all right, like I'll go look. So I start to like, I start to like elevate up over over like over the, the, the blue the blue curtain and the doctor turns and looks at me and it was like a moment at a godzilla like the original godzilla where he slices rodan and the blood hits the camera right oh. like she took it, blood went right across the mask and i just went right back down i was like, I was like everything's fine <laughs> <That's not good. laughs> you're, you're doing great honey it's a miracle dude it was horrifying but yes but like death to life like i'll take life every oh, time yeah All All right, right, my so- my son was 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 born pretty big and i remember the same thing when they were uh i wanted to look and uh, my wife was like take a look see and i remember i got the same thing where i kind of start to rise (laughs) and they caught me and they were like sit down no no you you worry about the north part and we're gonna take care of this and uh sure i remember when they were trying to get my son like out (laughs) My wife's head just kept moving further and further down the table to the point yeah. where they're like, okay, we need to readjust. Oh. <laughs> she just, uh, uh, uh. They started, I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? I've, I've seen Dr. Pohl. We're going to put the chains. We're going to come along. <laughs> Crazy. All right, you, you, you guys deliver my babies and I'll kill your animals. <laughs> well, I want, no, I want, oh. that to mean, I want that to be nice. <laughs> Last night, I helped my, uh, my neighbors deliver a horse, what? Bury, bury a cat. <laughs> Really? Yeah. It's funny. I, used to put in, I used to put in sprinklers. We pull them up all the time. It's the grossest oh, thing. It's when gross. a cardboard box comes up with a cat skeleton. Did Eat you cry, it. Dennis? Uh, this one I did not, but uh, I did. Uh, uh, the officiate isn't the right word, but you know they were about to just you know start scooping the dirt back onto the box, and I'm like, well, hold on, take a second. Why don't you say something nice about your cat? And I, I went to the guy's wife. I'm like, do you have share a nice memory of your cat? And then we, you know, we filled in the hole but what was the cat's yeah. name oh what was the cat's name yeah you were really there storm <laughs> stormtrooper oh it sounds like a friendly cat stormtrooper 
Uh, let's take a moment of silence for Stormtrooper. Okay. I'm, I made a okay. huge mistake um, <laughs> when we were buried, right before we buried Bunky, for some reason we decided to open the box. Why? Oh, why? I don't you know. cool. We wanted to make sure, like, I don't know, that she was dead. I don't know. Like, I don't know why. It needs air. Why. Open up the box. It needs air. I don't know why we did it, but we did it, and that was it, man. It was the, it was the worst hour I could ever remember. I just cry, I cried. I'm trying to I have a spade, and I'm just digging a hole, and there's, like, a lot of, um, like, it was not easy ground to get through. There was a lot of, like, vines and, and roots, roots and, and stuff <clears throat> so to get four feet deep because like god forbid you don't bury them deep enough and then some animal pulls them out and you wake up right. and bunkies like on your in your yard you know that's some pet cemetery shit but i cried the whole time i have a plaque right where i buried her now i sit there on my lounge chair because i put a pool in what's the what's the proper tool for for burying a cat is that a long handled shovel is that one with the handle at the end i you use, use, a, I use a, like what do you do i use you, a landscaping spade yeah right. you could use a nice spade you could probably get a like a like a maddox or like a hoe something that you can get in there and kind of scoop out some of that it depends on the earth you're trying to dig into like a rounded tip not a square tip no a square tip why would you no use no, a no, no round no. tip shovels bullshit dude there's no use for a you're using tip. a flat a flat an shovel? shovel. I right? used a flat, yeah, a landscaping spade. Joe, you know, you probably had them on the truck. Yeah, but we we would use a round tip shovel for digging big holes. I'm just curious what the the part isn't that what a spade is? is? I thought a spade was the yeah, shovel it has a spade the end. Yeah. Oh, I didn't use a spade. Sorry, I used a, uh, a landscape an edging shovel. An edging oh. shovel. I have a you spade. I don't. Feet. I don't use it for anything. No. You got down four feet with that sucker. Uh, yeah. Well, that's four impressive. Feet. I mean. <laughs> yeah, deep four feet is. Look at you. You're I'm, like the human backhoe. <laughs> I probably, let's be Mikey honest. Mikey Buckets I, over there. <laughs> I probably didn't get four feet. <laughs> yeah. So after you dug four feet, who helped you out of the hole? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I, uh, I was really nervous when we put the pavers over top of her. That they what you do is you put the shovel across the top of the hole. You do like a pull up and then you... <laughs> Yeah, I must have not gone four feet. I measured it, though. I, I remember measuring. I probably went I, I went close like to four 18 feet. 18 inches? <laughs> no, because it would have come back up, dude. Like, something would have pulled it out. Like, there's shit in my yard all the time. Yeah. Groundhogs, squirrels, you know, S squirrels Jersey Devils. Go <laughs> you got the Jersey Devil? <laughs> no, I don't know. Some people say I live in South Jersey. I don't think yeah. I do, but Joe, no. you live in South Jersey. Uh, you know, I, I think I live in Central, but all right. <laughs> no, is, is I that think, the thing? There's no Central Jersey, right? Is that the no? Whole? There's 100 percent of Central Jersey. Anybody yeah. who says there's not a Central Jersey, I challenge you to a duel of slap fighting. I think it's from <laughs> Central Jersey's up. from Monmouth to Tom's River. Yeah, I get so. Uh, so I seven guess seven three two, central. right? Yeah, six oh nine is firmly in the south. Yeah, yeah. and seven three two is your Central Jersey, right? Yeah. Uh, exit. Yeah. I'd like to think in like, the south. Exit ninety eight, like one. 109, maybe 117 to 98 to Central Jersey. Mm, that's a Anything short below. distance, man. That's like a sliver then. In that's the, a sliver. That's like a belt around. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll go this then. I'll go, uh, I'll go the Driscoll Bridge. South of the Br Driscoll Bridge to 98 is Central Jersey. I'm 98. That's just, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in, you're at the very, very <laughs> bottom of 98. You're just making of, uh, it. South, <clears throat> Thank you. I've always wanted to be in Central Jersey. I mean, you don't really <laughs> want to be in South Jersey. Dennis and I lived there for many years. It's mm -hmm. different. I mean, we, Frank. Frank lives there. Oh, yeah. speaking of Frank, this we get Frank. Frank. Let's talk about this because I think the fans need to know. We reached out to your brother Joe Maffei, and by no, we, no. I mean no. We just talked about it on the show. He reached out to Dennis. Yes. All right, so Dennis, take it away, so, bro. What happened? So I get a I get a uh, Twitter private message from uh, I think. Bro, hold on, let me look it up. I think it was Brother Stephen. I didn't even know he tweeted. <laughs> yep, Brother Steve. I don't want to read it to you. It is very long. <clears throat> but it starts off wonderfully with greetings, Dennis, the intern. I'm like, yeah. who is this? And he introduces himself and he says that he's your brother, Joe. Uh, and he's very complimentary of the show, uh, what you do. He was very complimentary to you, Joe. He loves the way Mike runs the show. He loves my contributions. He was very complimentary. But uh, at the end, he said in no cer uncertain terms, he does not want to participate uh, in the, you know, you know, know your bro, <laughs> the, yeah. the game, the game show, know your bro. So <clears throat> I did go back, obviously I'm thinking about the show. Um, and I said, you know, I, I appreciated his message. I appreciated his kind words. Um, but 
you know, we're not going to ask you anything that's like, it's not meet the press. We're yeah. not going to ask you about your political views. The only things you're going to have to defend are maybe humorous wrong answers, uh, things of that nature, just fun. Right. Uh, and he, he said that he, um, he thanked me for the clarification and uh, <laughs> that he thought it would be best to pass at this time. <laughs> Let me stress that it was he wants to pass at this time. I guess he wants to know how much better the show's going to be in the future. Yeah, he, uh, he did have a little commentary about some of the games Dennis plays. Kind of rattled me, but we're back on track. He said they were shit, right? <laughs> he does not like conspiracy from conspiracy. <laughs> Nobody does, <laughs> dude. I got news for you. Most people turn the show off when it happens. Yeah. Were they, for they, conspiracy from conspiracy. Yeah, or they fast fast forward. It's a pointless that. piece of shit. It's fun. No, it's not fun. It's, it's good not times. fun. I'm going out on, on a limb and saying I'm never playing it again. Oh. You want me to stop making conspiracies from conspiracy? You could make it. You could even air it. I'm just not participating. You're not going to just be Joe? I'll Joe play. versus Joe. I'll play. I'll win then. <laughs> Thanks, I win every Joe. time. Uh, but the messed up thing. Hold on. Be. I got to rewrite today's game. Give me, uh, a, just give me a few minutes. <laughs> I found out about this from Dennis. Yeah, that is <laughs> That's weird. I spent that week thinking that you would have reached out to me, Joe, and saying, hey, so my brother said he talked to you. Right. And then today when we were going over what we were going to do today on the show, and Mike brought up, you know, um, know your bro, I was like, whoa. Know your bro, whoa. <laughs> I guess you didn't know. So, so Frank gets a default win, huh? I think so, you know. Oh, that hurts. Unless the only way to win is not to play. It's yes. war games rules. Maybe <laughs> um, Steve's got the long Frank, one in the long game. Frank. <laughs> Frank. Yeah. Um, you're on the air. Uh, you, you don't listen to the show anymore? What's that? You don't listen to Pizza Beer Revolution anymore, do you? There's enough stupidity in the world. I don't need to. Oh, oh. oh that hurts. So I think, we just give, I think we give Joe Maffei's brother the win by default. There we go. So All right, Frank, Frank I'm just calling to inform you that you you lost <laughs> Know Your Bro. He lost Know Your Bro. He War Games rules wins. I think we know something about our bros. Neither of them like us very much. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother's too busy to play. He's a New York City police officer. Oh, yeah, he's busy. He's busy right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, interesting. So... So I think we're going to have to come up with a new game for the future. <laughs> well, I, I think that I'm not ready to put a pin in uh, Know You Bro. I think, I, think, I think Steve will – I think he'll come around. Maybe, maybe you can have a conversation with him, Joe. Yeah, you know? we'll see what happens, right? Yeah, I mean, let's not, let's not say no. This is a great idea. just needs a little bit more, a little more time to stir. Well, it'll, it'll, I think it's a good – We'll get and, I, and I always think it's a little bit of two on one here. You know, Mike and I have similar opinions about a lot of things, and then you and Steve could have the wrong opinion together. Exactly. <laughs> and I think maybe that's the kind of stuff that's keeping him off the show. <laughs> he doesn't want to be aligned with me. I just want to point out that my brother totally just hung up on me. He yeah, did. I, <laughs> I don't know if we wanted to talk about that. If you wanted to have a have a sidebar. Yeah. He obviously is too busy. He exited on the line. There's enough stupidity in this world. And then he hung up the phone. <laughs> and he hung up the phone. He walked out. Uh, I don't That's know sad. what to say about that. Hey, you guys want to play top or bottom? Yeah. Yeah, More me too, anything. but I didn't, I didn't prepare one. Oh. oh. So we're stuck with Dennis's game only? We're stuck today? with Dennis's game. Dennis's game. Do we want to play it now? Yeah, I think we should play it now because um, why not? Yeah. Oh, sure. Because <laughs> why not? Well, today, I know that you're not listening to it today because we're recording it today. You're going to be listening to it later, which will be today for you, but not for us. For us, it's later. Bill and Ted, their new movie, uh, Face the Music, they launched the trailer. Yeah, it's uh, terrible. You didn't care it's, for it. Yeah, that's terrib that was a terrible trailer. I didn't see it yet. Keanu looks so old. He, he is. Dude, look he's like old. 60, man. Yeah, but he looks good in John Wick. Dennis, how, how old is Keanu Reeves? I'll look it up right now. Hold on, I yeah. lost you. There we go. I mean, he's old as dirt, dude. But the other dude looks great. And death still looks the same. Well, yeah. <laughs> 55 years old. Keanu Reeves is 55 oh, wow. years old. 
I thought he was sixty. And those John Wick movies really put the top, put the the, uh, the miles on you. Yeah. And as you have um, nine minutes. Thank you. The trailer for Bill and Ted Face the Music dropped today, and in honor of that, I present a game I wrote called Bill and Ted, Marty, or both. So, basically, I will read you a statement, and you will tell me if Bill and Ted did it, if Marty did it, if both Bill and Ted and Marty did it, or if neither of them did it. It seems you like a it? lot of work for a tough game here. It is. Joe, you got the scoreboard up? <laughs> you I'm got ready the scoreboard. Go. All right, listen. So how many oh. movies were there? There were two. This is the third one? This is yes. the third one. I don't Bill know if I ever saw Bogus Journey. Oh, it's, it's great. The first. I think it's, it's what do you, great. What? It's great? It's better yeah, than yeah. the first? It's a, it's a, you got to be a movie lover of like of those type of movies, though. It, it's really a good movie. I enjoy it. I think they really, they honored the first movie with the second film. Yeah. It All was right, very gonna, good. I'm they took it go into back. an interesting new direction. Bill and Ted are to, uh, truly watch, important people. I'm going to have to watch <laughs> both before I watch the third, right? Yeah. And you are going to watch the third, aren't you, Joe? You're, you're going to watch it or you're going to stay away? Yeah, I watch everything. I, I mean, I even give bad stuff a chance. Like, the game we're about to play. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> well said. Rece- All right, so I'm going to read you, you know, who did the following things with their adventures in time? Received help from an older gentleman on their adventures through time. They both did it, man. Both they did. Uh, what was his name? What was uh, what's his father's name? He's dead now. Uh, George Carlin. Yeah. And what was everybody his name? who was they, they brought back was older than them, too. What, what was his name? So, yeah, you're, you're right. They both did it. Doc Brown for Marty and Rufus. Rufus for Bill and Ted. Tied right now. We're tied. We're tied. Performed a song that changed the world. I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let Joe go first. Well, it depends on if you want to think that Chuck Berry's songs changed the world or not. Uh, I, I would go with Bolt still on that. I think Chuck Berry de- definitely did uh, advance rock and roll. And I think that the Wild Stallions, is that right? Stallions? Wild Stallions. Changed the world. They changed the world too. They made it a better place, but that's not true in the trailer for the third one. Uh, I'm going to say neither because they never wrote the song that changed the world, Bill and Ted. Right? So I'm going to take it back. I'm going to say Marty. You took it to a weird place. I did. I well, said, Bill and Ted have never. They've never. They haven't. They were going to have written the song that changed the world, but they had not written it yet. To is, this this like a, is this like a grammar tense thing I missed out on? Yeah, I think I'm did. right. I could tell by his reaction. I said neither. Marty's uh, rendition of Johnny Be Good was after his parents kissed. And the plot of Bill and Ted's the new Bill and Ted movie is that they have yet to write the song that the future is based on. Yeah, they didn't write it. I yet. said neither. Well, I, I disagree with you. I say I say Marty because he played Johnny Be Good and that changed rock and roll in that moment. I'm going so with Johnny. I'm, da- I'm going with Johnny Dangerously. That's a fucking trick question. Johnny <laughs> Dangerously. Dangerously. Yeah, that's a fucking trick question. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> ice. Fargan you see this gun? It shoots a bullet that goes behind the guy. That's behind the guy. Behind the bars. School. You shouldn't <laughs> kick me in the balls, Johnny's mom. You think that movie holds up? <laughs> yeah, no. it does. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> when they're walking and having a conversation and Johnny's telling everybody about all his family members that are dead, yeah. and he looks up and he goes, where the hell are we? <laughs> then the fire, Johnny's getting laid. I love Oh, Johnny that was Davis. great. That was great. That's a better sex scene than Shaft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the hands. Um, Had to make fly on the fly repairs to their vehicle. Wait, hold on a second. I'm, who got the point? I'm, I'm saying I got the point. Dennis got the point. No, the Dennis point. is wrong. wrong. He's wrong. He made the game. He knows the answer. That doesn't mean that the answers are right. I didn't know there was a he, debate section. You posed the question, <laughs> but your yeah. answer was incorrect. It was. It was a. It was a. a I, I think an opinion. I think I'm gonna have to give this one to Mike because he's right. Thank you. Even though I was thinking about Earth Angel as the song, I forgot that Johnny B. Good. Yahtzee. The the bootstrap paradox. I'll take the point. Marty goes back in time. Performs Johnny B. Good. Chuck Berry's cousin. Chuck Berry records the song. Marty learns Chuck, of the future. Chuck, goes back it's, to the- listen to this. Who's it? It's Marvin. It's Marvin your cousin. Berry. Marvin Berry. <laughs> All right. Number three. It's one to one. Number three. Had to make on the fly repairs to their vehicle due to damage received on their adventures in time. It's got to be both, right? He fixed the, 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 the car and then they fixed the freaking antenna on the phone booth. Yeah, I agree. Both. It is both. Marty and Doc needed to repair the DeLorean after it was hit with a bolt of lightning and an arrow. 
and Bill and Ted had to repair the phone booth with chewing gum and trash after it was damaged. But I couldn't remember how it got damaged. It was about when it was going down. I think a cannonball took off some of the antenna, right? And they finished. Okay. They fixed it with chewing gum and pudding cups. You have too much time on your hands. I do. <laughs> damaged or splintered the timeline. Oh uh, well, definitely, definitely Marty. And I'm trying to think. I don't think. Um, I don't think Wild Stallions damaged the timeline. I'm gonna just say Marty. Yeah, I'm gonna say Marty, just Marty too, because they were supposed to be successful. I mean, they kept the timeline intact. That's what I put. I said Marty, the sports almanac, messing up his mom and dad's meeting, saving Clara. Bill and Ted, although had many wacky adventures, their time traveling never damaged the timeline. And them. finally, used time travel for personal gain. Was that Bill and Ted? Was that Marty? Got to go with the opposite of Mike either. if I want to. I, I know, talk. right? Okay, who answer? I, whose turn is it to answer first? It's yours. Yeah, it's yours, Mike. <laughs> who who used it for personal gain? Well. I, I know, like, Biff used it for personal gain, clearly, and Marty was against that. Although, I feel like he used it for personal gain later. Like, on the <laughs> sly, he did some shit. But Bill and Ted, I mean, they the whole plot of the movie was, like, them getting an A on their history report, and that that's personal gain. I'm going to say both. I'm going to say both, too. <laughs> oh. It's just Bill and Ted, according to my analysis. Bill and Ted are tasked with acing their history report so they can stay together and win the Battle of the Bands and write the song that saves the world and the universe. Marty accidentally messed up his parents' meeting after getting in the DeLorean to escape the angry Libyans. His better life after the events of Back to the Future were not by design. His one attempt to profit never came about with the sports almanac, and then he spent the rest of that movie trying to unring that bell. So he never even went back in time to try to do it. So I said it was Bill and Ted. Yo, you know what? I'm, I'm honored to uh, tie with you, sir. No, you didn't. You won. You 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 had one more point than I did. You actually oh, I did. Yeah, you Why didn't you cover? Out. You really thought well, it was both, Joe? Or? Yeah, I really thought it was both. Oh. You know, I, I know. Yeah, I thought about the black truck and, you know, and then I thought got convinced, you know, everybody's got self-interest in mind. And His life people. did get better. Yeah. But it's not because... It's not because like he wasn't actively trying. He was just trying to get his parents back together but to fix. He, he wasn't trying to make it better. But didn't he meddle with the timeline and send a letter to Doc Brown to, to save him for his own benefit? Yeah, that's right. He did. Yep, 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 yep. Well, yep. that was to save Mox, Bob, Marty's life. Or, uh, to save Doc's life, not Marty's own. Yeah, but, but I'll tell you this. Marty. The interesting thing is, depending on when in the time stream Doc reads that letter, yeah. that means that Doc had to actively participate in marty's life and make sure that marty never like move, his parents never moved that he never gets hurt that he yeah. never because now the only thing in Mar in doc's life he has to do two things create the flux capacitor which at that point he already done to make make the time machine work and make sure marty goes back in time because without marty going back in time he never gets the ref writes the letter that he gives to doc so in a sense Marty's kind of until the end of that movie, he's he's in an infinite time loop. Interesting. And then if something goes wrong, Doc's got to go back in time and fix it so that again, everything has to lead up to the moment where Marty gets in the DeLorean and goes back to 1955. So Doc could have thought Marty was Doc a Brown dick dies. And still cultivated him, <clears throat> huh? Doc could have thought Marty was a dick and still cultivated him. Like, what if Doc reads this <laughs> and then you know, and then Marty's parents are like, you know, we only want two kids. What happens then? <laughs> Bad stuff. He's got to make sure they have a third kid. He sends chocolates and roses over. <laughs> yeah. a little Marvin Gaye. <laughs> nice. A little suke suke now. I mean, like, speaking of, like, all these time travelers, though, like, you'd, you'd have to almost feel like somebody, like Donald Trump is a time traveler or somebody's a time traveler, and they've completely gone back now and messed things up so bad. That's where we are right now. I yeah. could see Donald Trump being a time traveler. Well, he is a time traveler. You I know, can't be because he, would, he I, I wouldn't have that it. hair. No, you, but I because <laughs> the fact that like he could be going through all of this and and not care about public opinion or because I think it's because he firmly knows where where this is all going to land. Are you are you joking with me right now? Do you not <laughs> know that Donald Trump's a time traveler? I, I'm speculating right now. Uh, are, no, dude. There is a plethora of data 
and evidence <laughs> to support there's, it. There's, there's data? Dennis. Plethora? Dennis, look at me. Look I'm at look, me. I'm looking at you. Bro, are you ready for this? Uh-huh. Where to begin? Hefe, would you say I have a plethora of piñatas? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes Lefe, you do you know the theory? <laughs> About Donald Trump being a time traveler? Yes. Uh, yeah, I know he's an astronaut. Do you know who, uh, do you know who Nikola Tesla is? Yes, of course. Right. Okay. Den yeah. Dennis? Of okay. course. What did Nikola Tesla work on? Uh, everything that Edison published. <laughs> <laughs> what was he? AC current. He yeah. was uh, wireless electricity, which would have been amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he invented the, uh, the, 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 the modulator that could crack the earth in half, that, you know, using uh, frequencies. Sure. What, you're missing you're missing one one huge piece to um what he worked on I, I, we, I, we, I, we just did a game about it time travel worked on time travel he worked on time travel he, and transportation he, he was using electricity to try to try to bend the space-time continuum i guess for lack of better scientific words but and what he said was he said he never traveled physically through time but he saw the past the present and the future all at the same time and he also said Aliens were talking to him too. He thought too. Well, he, I was going to say he essentially fried his brain doing this. Okay, yes. so let's let's take that for what it is. He died penniless. But when he died, <laughs> do you know that the government seized all of his works, and they yeah. brought them into a think tank and to try to decipher like what the hell he was working on and if they could compound on it or use it. And do you know what they found? They it's found that they were not smart enough to even decipher. What the hell he was writing? So they brought in the next smartest person on the planet Earth to decipher these books. Do you know who that was? That was Einstein. John. It was John Trump. And who was John Trump? It's Donald J. Trump's uncle. And jo and Donald J. Trump's uncle, uh, our president's uncle, Don Trump, John Trump, looked at all of this data, and he went back to them, and you said, and you know what he said? No. I can't. Uh, I, I I can't decipher it. I can't make heads or tails of it. I'm gonna take this book home. I'm gonna take this book home. <laughs> okay. Now speaking of books, I'm gonna work. I want you to home. Google this right now, Dennis the intern. Get your fingers right. on the Google. Um, Ingersoll right. Lockwood. Ingersoll Lockwood. Who is he, Dennis? I'll tell you who he is. He's an author from the 1800s, bro. The 1800s. Who wrote a book called what, Dennis the intern? You just Googled the last it. president. What was the other book called? Uh, hold on, books. I got the last president, Baron Trump's marvelous underground journey. Don Baron Trump. This is the eighteen hundreds, everybody. <laughs> Baron Trump's marvelous underground journeys, which take place in what country? I'll tell you, Dennis the intern. <laughs> Russia, me. Russia, and he has a older gentleman that just happens to help him through his underground journeys. What's his name, Dennis the intern? You tell me. Donald! Donald? You could okay. see this coming. <laughs> Donald okay. helps Baron? So I want you to take a look at that coincidence bullshit. Ingersoll Lockwood wrote Baron Trump's Adventures, who had Donald as his helper in the 1800s. You're telling me that John Trump didn't steal Nikola Tesla's time travel stuff, give it to his nephew, and now he's playing 5D chess, screwed up the whole country. Oh, man. Or doing really good things. I don't know. But, dude. Who's to say? He's got the long I, view. You need to deep dive into gonna, that theory. Dennis is making a note. Why does Mike ask us questions that he doesn't want the answers to? Well, I, I can answer it faster than he can Google. And this is a radio show, so nobody wants to listen to us. Watch no me type. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you go down nobody that wants hole. to listen to you guys watch me Google. Joe Maffei, you, you have to admit, dude. That's that's insanity. I I my mind is actually blown right now. How that's is that? How insane. is that at all coincidental? Like all of those things. It, it isn't a coincidence. Something's happening. <laughs> Something's happening. I'm convinced now. Something's happening. He, I mean, Ingersoll Lockwood wrote him in the 1800s, man. And, 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 and the show. And, and I got it. And the kid this. Baron was really tall too. <laughs> he was a lawyer, a writer. I I. I 
we have to end the show. I, I have to read this. I have to look into this. I can't believe you never. We first of all, I can't believe we've never talked about this. It's one of my favorite topics of all time. What was our like, first time I, traveling episode? Baron Trump's <laughs> marvelous underground journey, a real book. Yeah. Wow. From what date? What's the date, bro? Because I'm sixty percent. Yeah, eighteen ninety. How did you stumble upon this? Uh, because like he Snopes has is calling it mostly true. He has to be well. What's what do you mean mostly true? Donald Trump has to be a time traveler, right? Like he he's going through this so nonchalantly, throwing he's pissing into the wind, dude, and like he just throws whatever he wants out there, and he and he walks away squeaky clean. It's like they're freaking out because they can't figure out how he's doing what he's doing. But we all know he's traveling. He's already seen so, it. So Ingersoll wrote three books. He wrote Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, which was published in 1893. And 1900, the last president came out a few years after that. All right. What's the last president about? I don't know. I'm not, but, but then he penned a book, at least one other book about Baron Trump. Oh. And it was called The Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump and His Wonderful Dog, Bulgar. Which mm-hmm. I don't know if, there's very, if that's very prophetic. But who's mm-hmm. to say? <clears throat> I don't know what Bulgar means. Do a deep dive, Bulgar. everybody. Your minds will be blown. I'm not saying that time travel is possible, per se. But the evidence to support that Donald Trump is a time traveler is out. It's amazing. It is now probable. It's not confirmed. Jamie no. and Adam have not dropped the confirmed plate on it yet. But if Bill and Ted can time travel, so can Donald Trump. We all know Marty. Revolution. Yeah, Marty. Hey. No, Marty. Can't. I, I think I think we ended on that. I mean, people's minds are blown. Yeah. Get googling, everybody. Anything get to you, Google. Want to, anything you want to plug on the way out? Just Thanks, that. Brother Steve, for not coming on the show. Oh, we love Brother Steve. <laughs> I look forward to the time where he changes his mind. He will. Uh, and uh, again, like Brother Steve did, hit me up on Twitter at Dennis the Intern. Joe Buffet. That's it. Uh, I, got, I got no plugs except that I'm going to go out and get this book right now. I hear you also wrote a book called uh, Willie Gates and, and the COVID Conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza Beer Revolution. You can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give some love. And we would love you back. We'll see you next time, everybody. <laughs>